Hello and welcome to this Ecognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at the contrast split segmentation. So a segmentation algorithm that creates image objects that then you can use for your workflow, for your analysis. As always, we first gonna have a few theory slides and then I'm gonna show you a project in Ecognition where I use this contrast split segmentation algorithm. What does it do? It segments your image into dark and bright regions. So it's splitting it up based on a contrast. It is based on one single layer. So you can use one layer for this segmentation. And what it does, it finds automatically the best threshold based on the maximization of the contrast in a given range. So you define the range and it looks for the best contrast and then splits it based on that information. I would say that this algorithm can be applied locally, so you can apply it on different image objects and then it's going to calculate the best threshold for each object and split it based on that information or based on a chessboard that you define in the algorithm or you can define, right? If you set it to a small number, let's say 10, it's going to split up the domain into 10 times 10 sized chessboard objects and then calculate the best threshold for each chessboard and split it based on that information. If you set the chessboard to a very large number so it encloses the whole image, then it's more or less a global approach and it looks at all the information it finds within that object. One more important setting that I briefly want to mention is the contrast mode. So you have three different ones that evaluate the contrast in a different way. The first one is edge ratio you see the formula here on the left hand side and this one looks at the edge of your object at the boundary right and calculates based on the, the pixel values around the outlines of the single objects it calculates the contrast and in this case that would be 0 0.258 if we use the contrast mode edge difference that's the second one it simply subtracts a minus b so it subtracts b from a in this case, and you get a value of 38. So it really looks just at the edges of your object. And the final one is object difference. So it looks at the difference between mean of all bright pixels and the mean of all dark pixels of the resulting objects. Now, an example how it can look like in eCognition. Let's assume this is your input image. You see there's a certain gradient from gray to white and now your task would be to find a threshold to split up this into two classes pretty difficult task i would say but if you use the contrast split segmentation it's fairly easy what you define is a min threshold in this case zero so that's the lowest value it starts uh, looking for a threshold max threshold is the max value it's looking for threshold so within these two values it's looking for a threshold the best one with the highest contrast the next one the step size this one is crucial because it defines by which value the threshold is increased to test the next threshold right and calculate the contrast so it starts with zero it splits up the domain and calculates the contrast then it if the step size is 25, the next one it looks for is 25, splits up the domain and then calculates the contrast between the resulting objects. Then again, because the step size is 25, it looks at the threshold of 50, does it again. And then the winner with the highest contrast is going to be the final split. Okay. Stepping type is set to add. You can set it to add or multiply. Add simply means it's adding up the step size. So it starts with zero, then 25, then 50, 75, and 100. If you said to multiply, it's simply gonna use multiplication instead of adding it up. Okay, that also means if you enter a higher step size, it tends to execute faster because it only calculates for a few step sizes or potential thresholds. If you set that to a very low number, it calculates for each of those values, a potential contrast, and that's just taking longer, right? And I set the contrast mode in this case to object difference, so difference between the two objects. And the highest contrast wins, right? And then this 
threshold is used where the highest contrast is calculated. And using these settings for this image, this is the result. Nice, isn't it? So the best contrast was 76 and the best threshold 200. So it used the threshold of 200 based on the settings and the contrast was 76. So it looked at the mean brightness of the bright area that was in this case 223 and the mean dark 147. And if you can calculate that one, that would result in that contrast. Okay. Let's have a look at simply in theory how it looks like, what it does in the background. Let's start with not 25, let's start with 125, the threshold. That will be the result using that fixed threshold for splitting. Let's calculate based on the information that we have, the mean brightness and the mean dark. So contrast would be 69, okay. It's lower than the contrast we had for the contrast split segmentation, right? Let's go increase that step size 25, right? So threshold now is 150 and the resulting contrast is 49. It's simply the bright mi minus dark. So 192 minus 143. This value is also lower than the one that was used by the contrast split finally, right? Let's go to the next one, plus 25. So we would be at 175, correct? Using the threshold of 175 would yield into a contrast value of 71. Again, mean brightness minus mean dark, so that's 71. Next one is 200. And 200 is the one that the contrast split segmentation came up with automatically, right? Contrast was 76, so that was the highest value if you go back in the video, that one is the highest one compared to the previous ones, right? So it took this one and executed and used this for the split. Let's do one more threshold 225. And let's see when we do the calculation, what the contrast would be here. So mean bright 238, mean dark 156, the contrast would be 82. Okay, that's strange. That's higher than the previous one. So why didn't the contrast split take this one? Simple answer is the default parameters in the algorithm. All right, we have to look at uh, two parameters down here, um, minimum relative area dark and minimum relative area bright. In our specific case, it's the minimum relative area bright. And these two are by default set to 0.1, that means 10% and only thresholds that lead to a relative bright or dark area larger than the value that you've entered in that field are considered as best thresholds. So in our case, if we enter the value 225 uh, or execute the segmentation with that strict value, the bright area will be less than 10% compared to the dark area. That's why it wasn't executed, right? So you could change the settings here and then it would create a threshold segmentation based on 225 um, because the contrast is higher compared to 200. But having this 0.1 values by default in there, it won't execute because the relative bright area will be less than 10%. Okay, let's briefly have a look at the other parameters here in this window. So chessboard tile si size simply defines the chessboard size. If you're working on the pixel level, um, level name is the name of the resulting level. Do you want to override your level? Yes, no. Minimum, maximum threshold. These define the ranges where the algorithm is looking for the best splitting threshold. Then the step size, right? I explained that before. Stepping type, add or multiply. Then you define the image layer that you use, right? Um, one layer. Then class for bright objects and class for dark objects. If you leave it default unclassified, it will simply execute the segmentation, but won't classify the objects, but you also can classify them right away into bright and dark. Then the advanced setting, that's the contrast mode that I addressed at the beginning. So three different settings. Then execute splitting, 
you can set that to yes or no. Uh, if set to no, it won't execute the splitting. But then I would suggest to write the results into variables, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to execute this algorithm. So the variable for best threshold and the variable for best contrast, I'm gonna use that uh, to get the information which threshold was used and what was the contrast value for that threshold, right? I'm gonna write that into a variable. You can do that as well, simply use a variable here. Then we have this minimum relative area dark and minimum relative area bright that I just explained. Minimum contrast, you also can define a minimum contrast value. And if the contrast is lower than your value that you have to find there, it won't be executed. And minimum object size, that's also, if you set that to 10, the smallest objects that's gonna be uh, generated will have at least 10 pixels. Um, otherwise, you also can have objects that are uh, one pixel in size, right? If you wanna have that, leave it or set it to one. If not, increase it. I usually increase it because I don't wanna have small pixel sized image objects. Okay, enough talking, enough theory. Let's go into the project. All right, here's our project. Uh, we have two, four, five bands, blue, green, red, near, and the shortwave infrared. And this is an island where you can do beautiful hikes. So I recommend, if you know where that is, I recommend going there and do some hiking. It's awesome. Um, but we're gonna have a look at the contrast split segmentation algorithm instead of hiking trails. So first one, classify water. Actually what I do here is I use the index layer calculation algorithm um, because I want to create a layer that gives me a very nice discrimination of two features. In this case, water, non-water and the NDWI really helps here. And the contrast split segmentation overall is a very good algorithm to split an image into two objects uh, when you see a very nice contrast between those, right? In this case, you see the island is dark, has very low values and the water has high values. That's the result of the NDWI. And now we can use the contrast split to split this domain so the NDWI Russell layer into two objects, bright and dark. And you see the settings here. I increase the chessboard size, so it covers the whole image. Um, minimum and maximum threshold, that's the range of the NDWI. Step size 0.1, so it looks at every 0.1 step and calculates the threshold. I'm using the edge ratio and I'm gonna write the threshold variable and the contrast into uh, a variable. Okay, the chessboard size wasn't large enough. You see, we have uh, it was split here, um, so it didn't took the whole image. I also can decrease it, and now you see the whole thing. So that doesn't look like a good result because it's looking at local uh, thresholds and it uses a different threshold for each object. Let's go for a very large chessboard tile size, so it's larger than my image, and that looks sweet. And down here you see in the image object information window I displayed the threshold and the contrast. So the threshold used was 0.1, and that also makes sense because I set the step size to 0.1, so it could never be 0.12, because my step size is 0.1. So we could change that, and then it would be different. And the contrast, you also see the contrast value down here for that specific threshold. Okay, let's decrease the step size and then also the contrast. Uh, the, also the threshold can change, doesn't need to change. Maybe it's the same value. So now it's a very nice way. We simply split up the domain into water and unclassified and it's one step classification and it found automatically a very nice threshold. Next step I want to look at is the clouds, but only in unclassified. So we have to adapt the domain. To do so, I calculated the brightness layer using the layer arithmetics. So it's simply blue plus green plus red divided by three. Um, 
And now I'm using this for the contrast split segmentation, right? Um, I have to adjust the minimum threshold and, and maximum threshold based on the values of the layer, right? And also the step size, and that would be my result. Looks quite okay right away, I would say. And now we have unclassified, and actually I want to do split it up into vegetation or vegetation and what I do here it's no surprise I calculate the NDVI normalized difference vegetation index and that's the one let's change the colors quickly so you see what's going on so red indicates healthy green vegetation and blue no vegetation so I'm simply gonna use this layer now to execute the contrast split segmentation um, change the setting again a bit so minimum threshold is different maximum is different uh, change the step size and of course I have to define the NDVI as input layer and I put the bright class into vegetation and the other into land uh, maybe land doesn't make that much sense I'm gonna call it non vegetation makes more sense uh, in my opinion then execute it and we already have a very nice land cover classification and we didn't spend a second in thinking about or finding a threshold right it was done automatically and it actually nicely delineates the features that I'm seeing in the image as well all right good so uh, thank you for watching this video um, contrast split segmentation was the topic hear you next time